What is an unexplainable memory from your childhood? I have this memory of sleeping in an office block in South London with my mum on an airbed. I recall looking out of the window and feeling sad. Years later I was driving and got a very strong impulse to stop outside this building and I was 100% certain it was that one. Every time I went past it felt odd. My mum says it didn't happen. Everyone else concurs. My best conclusion at this stage is that I probably had a very vivid dream that became conflated with something else. Not particularly interesting, but something I've always wondered about. As a kid it was only my mum and I. Sometimes she'd leave me home alone while she was at work for example. During school holidays and some weekends. I was about 7 and the first few times. I was terrified, completely convinced a serial killer would break in. So I'd take enough food from the kitchen and lock myself in my bedroom all day. Wouldn't drink too much water to avoid using the bathroom. When I watched television I set it to the lowest volume possible and sat right up close to listen. And I wouldn't turn on any lights when it got dark. Just squinted at my books near the window. That way burglars wouldn't know I was home. I played hiding games with myself sometimes. Like can I fit into this hamper so that burglars won't find me if they break in. After a year of nothing happening my nerves settled. Though I was still locking the bedroom door after me. I don't remember what I was doing. But I was in my bedroom when I heard a door slam in the living room during the daytime. I froze. There was rustling. And I could hear heavy footsteps back and forth. I remained totally still. Whenever it went quiet, I thought maybe it would be okay to get up. And then noises would start again. I heard things moved around. Maybe shuffling. The movements were purposeful. In a hurry. I don't remember how long it was until they stopped long enough that I thought they left. I don't recall whether I heard the door slam shut again. Honestly, I think I just got sick of sitting complete still in one position. The sun was setting and I crept out to look around. The place was maybe messier, but our shul apartment was always in disarray so I couldn't really tell. For some reason I thought I'd get in trouble if anything was missing. So I started tidying up. My mom came home later, and I didn't say a word. It was probably just my mom coming back for something. Or a neighbor, or at most, an opportunistic thief who didn't find anything worth stealing. But I did always wonder what happened that day. I could lose a dream when I was a kid. I would actually get really excited to go to bed because I could decide what to dream and then dream it. I had a reoccurring character in my lucid dreaming. He was a boy my age with blonde hair. We would always play in this backyard playground type setting that has a big brick wall on the edge. One night I dreamt that we really wanted to find out what was on the other side of that wall. So we climbed a tree and the boy climbed onto the wall, looked back at me and waved, and went over it. I never lucid dreamed again after that. It actually caused me a lot of distress as a kid. I legit missed him terribly and tried so hard to lucid dream but just couldn't do it anymore after that. I'm like 95% sure I sort of got hit by a car when crossing the street with my mom. There was a red light and we didn't cross at a crosswalk. A car inched forward and I remember falling onto the hood, but I was fine. I used to literally get flashbacks for years, but my mom swears it never happened. I think she's lying. Sometime before the age of 5, I remember being convinced that if I tried hard enough and believed in myself, I could fly. So I would practice flying, jumping down the stairs when nobody was watching. I never developed my ability to fly, but I vividly remember basically cannonballing down 14 steps, and just gliding down in midair, and landing at the bottom totally safe and uninjured, many times over the years. I remember, very vividly, seeing a leprechaun in the hallway of my house. It freaked me out so bad that I woke my mom up yelling someone's in the house. We walked from room to room with kitchen knives looking for the leprechaun, but never found that shifty little bastard. When I was really young I was being babysat by a couple of teenage college age girls that were friends with one of my older cousins. They took me to a party, laid me down in a random bedroom upstairs, and put on a random videotape that definitely wasn't Barney or anything else suited for children. My mom swears this never happened, but I remember it way too clearly for me to make it up. I remember being at a playground with my family and seeing lightning strike right in front of me. Didn't hear any thunder. No one else saw it, but I remember seeing it pretty vividly. Not sure if there's something that can go on in your brain that would cause something like that to happen. 
but I remember pleading with my mom to believe that I had just seen a lightning bolt strike right in front of me, and she just ignored me. I used to have nightmares. My dad put up a poster of Peter Pan in my room and told me that when I went to sleep, Peter would fly out of the poster and chase all of the monsters away. I never had another bad dream. The whole neighborhood thought I was kidnapped. I don't really know why and what the actual F is the thought process of how they think that happened but apparently the people are frantically searching me. What I remembered is that my elder cousin and her husband took me to an internet cafe to let me watch them pick their wedding outfits. When we returned, everyone was shocked. My brother smiles because he knew I was in trouble. My mom was crying. And my dad slapped the shout of me. It was so surreal. My mother walked into my room, waking me up to tell me that most of the world's population was dead. I spent the rest of the day as normal, eating breakfast, going shopping with her, going to playground, then eating dinner, albeit, acting quite nervous throughout. The next day, she tried to make it clear that what started the previous morning wasn't true. I asked her if she remembered, but she told me she didn't. I'm certain it wasn't a dream because I recall the rest of what happened the previous day to her, only to be met by her confirmation that everything I remembered was correct, right down to how shaky I was and how upset I seemed, all except for the part that humanity was on the brink of extinction. P.S. I am aware that, yes, it is true that most if the world's population is dead. What I meant when I originally wrote this was that most of the living population just dropped dead overnight. When I was a kid I had a classmate over who claimed he was a vampire. I didn't believe him. I told him if his eyes glow in the dark that would prove he was a vampire. We went into the bathroom and I turned off the light. His eyes were glowing. It scared the crap out of me. I opened the door, ran outside, jumped on my bike and got as far away from my house as I thought I could. When I eventually came back home the classmate was gone and my dad was pissed that I abandoned my friend. My sister and I apparently both had the same dream one night, a scary one. We were staying in this villa where we had to share a room and we both woke up suddenly. The window was open, when it hadn't been before. I realized she was awake as well and told her I'd had a bad dream. And as I started to describe it, she started talking along with me, describing the same dream. In it, this black creature that looked like a bull, only it had shiny, scaly, plastic looking skin was standing in the open window with this weird mechanical device, and it somehow fired a projectile at the lamp in the room, which started rocking back and forth. Neither of us wanted to get up and close the window in case the thing was actually out there, so we called for our mum and she closed it, reassured us in typical mum fashion, etc. For months we would talk about that incident and we could never figure out how we both managed to have the same exact dream at the same time. I don't believe in the supernatural today, but I used to, anyway, so there I was a 7 year old kid in rural Utah, I was staying the night at my grandparents house on main street, I didn't want to sleep, so around midnight I went down into the basement, I took my matchbox cars and played night city with my glowing better blocks, I had this little metropolis going on when my uncle came down to play with me, should I mention my great uncle died when I was 2, well, he did. Anyway, my great uncle and I played Night City for a good hour. I remember it like it was yesterday. He drove the Lincoln, because that was his favorite car. Anyway, it got late. He had to leave so he wouldn't miss his train. He left. I went to sleep. The next morning I asked when uncle was coming back to play again. My grandparents were slightly offended that I bought it up. They hadn't seen him since before I was born and wanted nothing to do with him. He was the black sheep of the family. I said him and I played cars and showed them the car that he drove in our city. They were uncomfortable with this and chalked it up to my imagination. I never met my uncle. Again. He died when I was two. Over the years since then. I have learned that he drove both a train. For Union Pacific. And a Lincoln MKVII. Like I said. I don't believe in ghosts. But I don't know how 7 year old me knew things about an estranged relative who died when I was 2 and was never spoken of, due to certain family issues. To this day I don't know what happened that night, but I remember playing Night City with some guy who said he was my uncle like it was yesterday. He was super nice, and at the end of the game simply left out the back door. When I was 6, I had a girlfriend named Molly. I moved away the next year and never saw her again. 
For the next 40 years, one of my earliest and most vivid memories was me watching a 6 year old redhead girl running away from me, up towards her house, yelling, mommy, mommy, Jonathan kissed me, and her mother's voice coming back, wheel, that must mean he really likes you. A few years ago, I'd had a little sangria and decided to see if Molly was on Facebook, I know, I know, there she was, right name, right age, right hometown, lovely red hair, I PM'd her asking if she was the right red headed girl, she wrote back that she was definitely the right Molly, and was happy to hear from me, but she'd only started dyeing her hair red after college, memories a trip, man. My family and I were driving out of Bellows, a campsite beach for military families in Hawaii. I lazily gaze out the window and something catches my eye. About 30 feet away in a clearing before a metal gate leading into the forest was a massive bird, like 8 feet tall massive. It had a long neck, brown feathers, and very thick long legs. My jaw dropped and I was still processing what I had seen when my dad said, What the hell was that? Turns out he had seen it too and we both described it identically. No one else saw it, and by the time our brains had caught up with our eyes it was too late to turn around. I will always regret not turning around. When we returned later in the day there was nothing there. When we asked a guard about it he laughed at us. I scoured the internet afterward, and it looked like nothing I could find. At least, nothing that isn't extinct it looked amazingly similar to one of the larger species of moa. But those lived in New Zealand thousands of miles away and died out hundreds of years ago. This happened back in 2009 and to this day I wonder whether I saw a Lazarus species.